Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the item that Riot absolutely does not want you building on Hecarim, and that is Spear of Shoujin. It's in his top five highest win rate builds in the game, building it anywhere from third to fifth item. It's a really, really, really strong. By the time you build it, it'll be giving you around 50 ability haste, and it gives you movement speed on its extrancy passive and a bunch of other stats. This item is nuts. I think Riot doesn't want you to build it because then they'll have to nerf it, because specifically it's too strong on Hecarim, because Hecarim can cast his Q without standing still to auto attack so what ends up happening in fights is Hecram's Q literally looks like this right here I turned off the cooldowns for the training tool but it looks like this so they don't want you building this item on Hecram. They also don't want you building Ravenous, which is also a high winner item on Hecram. It's kind of funny. I'm going to be showing you guys the build and how to run it. Yo, what's going on, guys? Going to be showing you why Hecram is one of the highest win rate junglers in the game right now. His main build has a 64% overall win rate. The main reason Hecram is so busted is because of his cheesy power spikes. You can get Umbral Glaive before most champions can get their first item power spike because it's only 2300 gold, which is around 1000 gold cheaper than most champions first item that they're going to be building for. So we're going to be rushing down Umbral Glaive. Then we're going to be going for Mana Moon into Spear of Shoujin. Something that all these items have in common is they all give you AD. They all give you ability haste and they all give you a crap load of damage. So Hecram is in a crazy spot right now to giga carry his Q literally looks like you're playing earth With how low your cooldowns get just make sure you don't build spear of shoujin too early For some reason it doesn't have it as a recommended item, which is ridiculous considering it's his highest win rate item in the game It's pretty funny I don't think they want him to build it because they don't want to have to nerf it because it Specifically works way too well on Hecram since the majority of his damage comes from his Q And he doesn't have to stand still to cast it or cancel any autos to cast it Spear of Shoujin, specifically on Hecarim, has probably the strongest synergy in the game for any, the way any champion synergizes with Shoujin. We're going to smite it while we have our W on, maximize our healing. You want to try to keep up your Q stacks. It's not the end of the world. If you don't, you do get extra AD and extra damage and lower cooldown for having it stacked, though. So something you want to try to look to do pull one monster out to the next camp. We can even do it here with the Raptors. All we have to do is to keep pulling this out. He's taking a sweet time there. The big Raptor's kind of hard. We'll go ahead and get our E. You can definitely run double points in Q. If you end up getting invaded, it's typically better to have all of your abilities rather than just two of them. So I usually prefer going for E than two points in Q. Usually you're not gonna run out of mana. We're also going to be picking up a tier, so mana won't be an issue here in a moment. Plus, once you have blue buff, mana is not an issue whatsoever. You can't take blue and gromp at the same time anymore. No jungler can take two full HP camps at the same time. It's not possible even for Fiddlesticks or Heimerdinger. You don't have to take a potion. With how important Hecarim's early game is, though, oftentimes it's worth it. Because if you don't have a potion, then you're, you're taking a risk. Having that in a 1 vs 1 or 2 vs 2 can really change the output of a game, the outcome. Hecram's full clear should finish before 320, like you see here, close to full HP. You can go for phase rush, but typically Conk, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand with Nimbus Slayer, these best attack speed 80 in armor. You can go for water walking instead of Nimbus. Nimbus has a bigger shock factor though, when you're trying to pick up kills and carry. Jax is incredibly low. I've been seeing a lot of Vladimir's lately. He gets the kill, blood pulls out. Hey, Warwick. Auto QW. Trying to position to where he couldn't swing through us, and he's literally just dead. I think he knows he couldn't get away. He probably didn't have his ghost either. He was absolutely doomed there. We can push people into Vague Cage. It's a really strong synergy. So like right here, for example, he was already in the cage. <laughs> We, we didn't need to push him in that instance. We could have just held it and queued him while we were on E. Heck, the Orn got pretty low off of that. Let's get our HP back above half. So Warwick's not speeding up into us. Bot lane actually looks gankable here. We'll go there. I'm going to ghost away from Warwick. I don't feel like dying. And I would also like a double kill if possible. Finish him off. We can fight for this. He has lethal tempo. I have conquer. 
He's actually faster than me. What the heck? Oh, he has tier two boots. He's dead, though. Nice try, Warwick. I should have paid attention to his items. I was like, wait, why is he faster than me? He has tier twos. Makes a lot of sense. We could almost f get our first item, so I'll go ahead and stay on the map. Got to get our ha our health above half, though, because Warwick's speeding off of us right now. Very close to Umbral Glaive. It's a really nasty first item back. If you can't afford it, feel free to get tier two boots and then Umbral Glaive. Lucid's on Hecarim feel really, really good. It's going to help your ganks, and also the cooldown gives you a lot of extra damage because of your Q. Funny that Hecarim ends up going Umbral when a lot of assassins don't even build it. Can we afford it now? Yes, we can. 2400. Here we go. Got a full Umbral with no boots. Quite the combo. Lots of AD, lethality, ability haste, and it lets you shred wards. One auto attack them down. I don't want to go bot level 5. I would rather get Gromp Wolves. Kind of surprised Samir was able to do that there. A little bit surprising. For some reason, Brand and Jinx both took kill. That's kind of strange. Warwick's top side. Brand is probably one of our better teammates. We'll play around him. Top's low, mid's low. We could go either way. Moving 348. Gotta love that one tap mechanic. Hey, friend. I don't think we need to R here. We can kill him without Ring. And we get to soak all this golden XP and continue the lead. After successful ganks, try to leech as much XP as you can. If your teammates are there, you shouldn't take the last hits. That's considered bad manners. Also known as BM. Bad manners and big bowel movement. You still have R to close here. Got W on. Down she goes. We didn't get an assist for Tark. That's all right. Staying to help shove the wave goes a long way. The enemies will miss more golden XP. And then your teammates can follow you for things like dragons afterwards. Hecarim's all about tempo. Don't get yourself killed. You have a lot of mobility and extremely easy, straightforward ganks with hard point and click CC. Staying alive is critical. Trading gold is not what you want to do on Hecarim. You never, ever, ever want to die on him. Staying alive is very important. He doesn't necessarily scale the best. His late game isn't bad, but they're certainly stronger late game champions than a Hecarim. Big self healing champions will always be able to solo him one versus one. Well, for the most part, it depends. Not always, but a lot of the time, self healing is his crux. Push him into our Vigar. Vigar. Didn't even bother to hit him with an auto attack for some reason. Maybe he was on full cooldowns. I don't know. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say he's on full cooldowns there. It's time to reset for Lucid's and Tear. Lucid's and Tear is going to go a long way. Bot lane seems to be fighting heavy. We could rush straight back there. Get some value. You can use your E to get across the map. It starts going on a cooldown from when you first activate it, which makes its cooldown on the lower side. Because it's four seconds of movement speed. Do the math. There's only a nine second gap between being sped up by your E and having it back up. Not bad for a level one. We do also have 35 ability aced. Tarek seems to be six. He'll probably have his R here. Am I on a ward or something? I have Umbral. It would have told me if I was on a war. E ghost time. Smiter, push her into my AD carry. And we get ghost extensions. Now we can run everyone down. You want to max W second E last typically. Goodbye, Warwick. Don't use your E speed up too early if you're already on it. Because you can attack while while you're on your E. You just can't really auto. So there he was on Ghosty. We weren't really able to get behind him. Your E lasts for four seconds, so if you're immediately gonna cancel the speed up to attack them with an auto then um, 
you're missing out on your full mobility, which is why you'll see Hecarim's slamming down Qs while he's on E and trying to maximize the movement speed four seconds rather than only getting one to two seconds of movement speed out of it by autoing too early. That's why it's important to have ability ace on Hecarim. It blends into his kit quite nicely for the Q spam. After Mana Moon, it's Spear Shoujin. After that, you typically go for tankier items, things like Death's Dance, Dead Man's, Force of Nature, because you don't want to give away your shutdown gold. Bot lane's going to be here momentarily, so we'll hover bot side. We have R. I think Tark has R, and Samir's a full item here. So if you look at gold spent, Samir's pretty equal to us, because Shield Bow costs way more than what we bought. Umbral's only, what is it, 2,500 gold? 2,300, that's nothing. Against Shield Bow's... It's more than a thousand. I want the double R, push her into the turret. I have Q stacked and I also got quite a bit of Conquer. Got a smite on her. Couldn't quite close. That's all right. Push him back into the team. Down he goes. Very, very nice. Your worst matchups on Hecarim are champions who can take you out of the fight. Xin Zhao R is very hard to deal with. Mordekaiser R is hard to deal with. Mundo is challenging as well because of Mundo passive. Mundo Cleaver also slows you so much and it's a short cooldown. So just think of it as Mordekaiser, Mundo, and Zin. Those aren't very common junglers though. Hecarim plays extremely well against really all the meta junglers. And I mean, even against Zen, you'll be fine if you time your R properly. Hecarim R goes through all CC. So if you're about to get Zen R, you can just snap your own R and win that interaction. The ability encounter there. Big fight going on top side. Orn's crossing back through mid. We'll go kill him. We have Smite to slow him. Tier 2 boots versus his no boots. For some reason, he's just sitting there. Oh, that's not good. I might actually die here. Yep, I died there. That's bad. At least the shutdown went to Orn. I honestly didn't think that Warwick had his R. Considering Vladimir just died. I didn't think that was possible, so my bad. Limit test gone wrong. Man Moon giving us 15 ability haste. Bunch of AD. It also gives you a lot of on-hit damage for your auto attacks and your physical damage abilities once it's complete into Muramana. Vagar's going to die there. Yikes. And this is where you go for Spear of Shoujin, which it does not have as a recommended item. And fun fact, you double check this. Spear of Shoujin is Hecarim's highest win rate item in the game. It's the equivalent of them having an Evelyn build and not having Majai as, as a favorited item. It just makes no sense. Like I said, I don't think they want to have to nerf Spear Shoujin. They want to give other champions a chance to build it. So if Hecarim players are ignorant and aren't taking advantage of it, then they don't have to bounce the item. Oops, accidentally put a point in E. That sucked. At least we get Taric R. That's not really what I wanted, though. I did not get what I wanted there at all. Oh, oh well. Taric R it is. We still have shutdown gold. If we die, they'll get 500 gold total. Drag Souls win con. Let's get our Q stacked up here. Never mind. We'll go for Orn. Never mind. He's full HP. Bot lane's all inning for some reason. I do not know why, but they are. I have three Q stacks for the Tart. Samir is low mana. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, I'm so dead. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. She has enough mana for R. I'm pretty sure it costs mana at least. These Warwick R's are kind of brutal. Kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of brutal. This game's going to get really challenging. Samir has double Jinx's CS, so even though we have double their kills as a team right now, it looks like the game's all wrapped up. Orn's ahead CS, and their AD carry has double CS with a Terracar. It's going to be hard to deal with. If we can manage to dodge 
Warwick R will be fine. It's a one or two second suppression. And Tenacity doesn't interact with suppressions either. Jax is looking diveable. Almost have jungle item finished. We only need a few more camps. Got two treats. Treats give you extra gold and an extra consumption on your jungle item. Might as well just full clear here, finish it. Have three stacks of Q built up. This is a really weird fight. Still have three stacks of Q built up. Gonna hit Orn with R to cancel his nonsense. And we live. That was really close. <laughs> Way closer than I would have liked. Yeah, I already saw that one coming. Big Miss Cage. Samir gets Tarak R. Uh, I can't do anything here. It's not doable. They're high HP and they're kind of fed. She also has plated still caps. Only need one more camp after this one. Then we'll have jungle item finished. Every time we touch a brush or kill a large monster, we get a massive movement speed bonus. And look at that Q cooldown. It's already starting to look like some Earth Hecarim action. Alright. Jack's flash at least. That's funny. He's chasing. Kind of funny. Give me these stacks, baby. Already back at three. They don't all fall off at once. You only lose one at a time. Samira doesn't have Terracar. She's dead here. Psych. I'm actually going to be the one who dies. <laughs> What happened? I go in, there's no abilities happening. Oh my god. This game's starting to look losable. Oh, Warwick's doing a lot of damage as well. I'll go for BF Sword first, spend maximum gold. Gotta stop dying. It's the one downside of this build. If you don't have any kind of front line, you are really squishy and they're super tanky. Double plated steel caps with the Warwick on triple plated steel caps with Warwick E damage reduct, Warwick self healing, the orange straight up tank. We don't have an easy target to just go in in one shot. That's a really weird team fight. Vlad went for <clears throat> Night Harvester. Hey, Samira. Maybe I kill everyone here if Warwick doesn't grind me up. Yeah. Possible. Yeah, Orn's scary, dude. He's doing a lot of damage. I gotta heal off something. Orn's gonna kill my... Jinx. Hey, Jax, down you go. Hey, Tarek, you're not really that fast. Spin to win, boys. You gotta spin it, you gotta want it, you gotta want it. See, that's what I was talking about. This spin to win mechanic. Is strong on Hecarim. All we need is one fight where we don't eat Warwick R to the face with his team behind him. And we can spin to win. Why am I maxing E second? E max second is so bad. I always go W max second. I have too much mu muscle memory for E max second. What champion have I been playing lately? Never max E second on Hecarim. W per, level, w per level gives way more stats. Hey, friends. Down you go. Time to reset. Oh, never mind. It's time for Dragon, actually. While Samira's dead, they can't team fight at all. She's their main source of damage when you look at CS and kills. 
She has half their team's kills and the most CS. Second most CS in the game behind us. Hecarim's definitely not balanced. He has too many item options, so many builds, and they're all heavily viable. It's not as if, oh, this build's not good on him. If you go it, you'll lose. No, all of his builds are above 50% win rate. Hey, friends. Pushing back into our team as we helicopter spin. We're on ghost extensions still. Sick. I'm still on ghost extensions. Warwick's about to R. I have my W on, so you can't really turn on us. Oh, six health, six health, eight health, nine HP. Dude, he's living with nothing. There's no HP left. Now we can get Divine Sunderer. Oh, baby. My favorite Earth Champion in ranked games, Hecarim. <laughs> when an Earth Champion sneaks out of Earth somehow. Q is on. The ability hits, he gains a stack that decreases the cooldown by 0.75 seconds. So the cooldown is... What's 0.75? What is that? 2.25. Dude, our Q's on a 0.25 second cooldown. What the hell? Is that real? That doesn't even make sense. That's so much. Could go for Divine Sunder. Divine Sunder is pretty good for the penetration. A little bit of tankiness. And they usually go for Death's Dance at this point. Now we have some HP and even more Ability Haze from the Divine. Every single item we have is giving a lot of Ability Haze. Spear of Shoujin is giving 50 Ability Haste. I can't go in first. We don't want to get focused down. And we also want to get our Q stacked first as well for the stacks. Warwick doesn't have his teammates behind him on that. Since his teammates weren't behind him, that was a really bad engage. Oh, I don't want to fight Samira like that. Warwick scrapping over here. Oh, got our smite off on her. She doesn't have flash. She can't get us. Hey, Tarek. Down he goes. We got that healing. Yeah, our Q's... <laughs> our Q basically doesn't have a cooldown look. It doesn't have a cooldown, bro. It's like a 0.1 second cooldown. It just doesn't make sense. Really doesn't make sense. There's no way to keep up with Hecarim. We don't even have phase rush. Give me those Q stacks. I gotta heal off something else. Hey, friends. Down they go. I have ghost. I can stay on this guy. Push him back into my team. Down he goes. Look how much HP we have, dude. <laughs> HP is so so much healing. Divine Sunder heals us. Spear of Shoujin gives us movement speed as well. You can have 15% movement speed based on your missing health. Gives you every stat you need on Hecarim, but it's not a favorited item. It's not a recommended item on Hecarim by Riot. Riot doesn't want you to build this item for some reason. I should, that should be the title. Riot doesn't want you to build this item on Hecarim. They literally don't. <laughs> Why is it not recommended? There's no star by it. Makes no sense. And you can't say, oh, because it's a new item. All the other champions have a, a uh, favorite. Ooh, we're taking turrets here. All the other champions have favorite and new items. I could potentially kill her with my R. I don't feel like giving her a thousand shutdown gold though. Can we back and get Death Stance here? 
You can go for Ravnus as well. Ravnus is also really good. It's not a favorite item either, but it's one of Hecarim's best scaling items for sure. Two stacks of Q are up. And now we don't have cooldowns. They might actually be on Baron right now. Let's see. Hey, friends. Oh, I regret this already. God, I almost died. Warwick could hunt us down now as well. Yeah, that's exactly what his brand needs to hit him. Take away his movement speed. Took a lot of damage there. I wasn't on anyone in particular with my R. It's a bit of a sloppy R. I'll go Death Dance. Death Dance gives ability haste. Gives 15. We are at a total of 115 ability haste. If we had this item, it would give us even more. 20 ability haste. It's quite a bit. 115 is not bad. Might be able to end here. I'd rather get Dragon. I want to have one more team fight. I think Hecarim's definitely a picker ban. If you don't want to play him, I'd recommend banning him. He's really good early game once he's level 3. His level 6 is a huge power spike. He doesn't fall off necessarily. And when he does start to get a bit weaker, the enemy team has to basically be full build on their AD carry. Outside of that... Just kind of nuts, man. Champ's not balanced. It's actually like a 0.1 or 0.2 second cooldown on his uh, Q. Down he goes. Maybe it's not worth it for the Warwick to burn R. He's most likely going to die there, anyways. It's time to team fight. This is the last fight of the game. Let's go, full build Hecarim! <laughs> Push him into my team. Yeah, buddy. Look at that speed. Oh, you think you win this? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> yeah, this literally looks like Urpacrum. It's actually Earth. Oh, man. Riot, what have you done with this champion? Penta! Woo! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nobody said anything. No one had anything to say. All right, let's look at graphs. Looking at damage dealt to new champions, we had the most in the game at 51,000. For damage taken, we'd also taken the most in the game. This is why self-healing is stupid. Self-healing breaks the game, and you're going to say, well, how's Hecarim a self-healer? He heals off his W, damage your teammates are taking, and damage you're dealing heals you a lot while you're on your W. For Hecarim to take the most damage in the game when there's literal tanks in the game, like Orn and Tarek, is so stupid. Tanks are underpowered. Self-mitigated, we self-mitigated the second most in the game, just a bit behind Orn, not bad. For runes, really high value Hecarim. Very, very unbalanced. He should be pick or ban regardless of your elo. Give him a try. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.